Welcome to The Shed. I'm Sid, Mackie's on the camera. And today we are gonna be learning how to dial in your suspension for the best possible feel. So again, this is a defined chattery kind of moment. For this task, you will need your bike, your fingers, possibly a couple other things like some Allen keys and a shock pump. You also need your brain and you need to have watched part one of the series, which we'll put a link right up there. In our previous video, we showed you how to start setting up your suspension, how to get the correct air pressure and sag, and how to find a good starting point with rebound and compression settings. Today, we are gonna dive a little bit more into how to optimize those settings for the train and how to interpret what you are feeling on the bike and know based on what you're feeling and how your bike is riding, what settings you need to change. First thing we wanna talk about is a technique called bracketing, which is generally what suspension techs will use with pro athletes to find the fastest set up for these athletes. If your goal is 100% speed and performance, this is definitely the way to do it. It takes all that subjectivity out. However, for most people, really just want the bike to feel good and we're not really competing for tenths of a second. So that's what we're gonna talk about in the second half. But first, let's talk a bit about bracketing and how that works. The way that bracketing or sometimes suspension testing works is that you find a short piece of trail that you can consistently ride over and over again at the same effort level without making any mistakes so that you can really isolate suspension as a variable. And then you will have someone, generally the suspension tech, they'll start with say rebound all the way open. You'll run the section of trail, they will time it, they will then have you run the same section of trail with the rebound all the way closed, time that, they'll see which one of those is faster. Then they'll put the rebound right in the middle, have you run that, see where that falls, and then sort of wheedle down to find that optimum setting for that trail. Obviously a test like this is the best way to find the objective fastest suspension setting for a given trail. However, it is a lot of work, a lot of logistics, not really practical for most people. So moving on to part two, we're gonna talk about how to interpret what you're feeling on the bike. For the next part of this video, I am going to play race mechanic and Mackie is going to play confused mountain biker and he is going to come in, he's going to tell me what his suspension is doing and I'm going to try to help. I was riding down the trail and then there was a big rock and then there was this huge drop and then there was this left hand turn. We decided to do this video this way as opposed to going through each setting and what you might feel on the far ends because the problems that we encounter on the trail are often a combination of settings or issues and we just wanted you guys to understand what some of these things that you may have felt while riding mean from a suspension perspective. Every time I go ride, I bottom out, I use all of my suspension. If you are bottoming out frequently, this is a very common problem. A couple things could be going on. First of all, you need to make sure that you have the correct amount of air in your fork, that you have set your sag properly with your shock. Assuming both of those things are true because you've watched our other video, you're going to want to think about when you are noticing that you're bottoming out. If you're riding your normal trails like Mackie claims he was doing, you're not hitting any big hits and you are bottoming out, most likely you might be a good candidate for an extra fork token. We have a video showing how to install fork tokens, what this really means, so I'm not gonna go in depth to it there, but adding a fork token will make your fork ramp up more quickly and require more force to bottom out. So more force as you get farther through the travel. So if you find yourself bottoming out while you're just riding along, JRA, definitely look into fork or shock tokens, depending on what you are bottoming out. If you have a high speed compression setting like this fork, and you are feeling like when you say go off a drop that you are feeling fairly good with how your fork feels through most of the travel and then it's sort of surprise bottoming out at the end. You might want to increase the amount of high speed compression that you have. So basically firming up that high speed compression, closing the high speed compression, whatever makes sense to you. So in this case, assuming that's what's going on with Mackie, we would probably give him 
two or three more clicks of high-speed compression and have him go ride that trail again and see if that helped. Again, if you don't have a high-speed compression adjustment and you are bottoming out a lot, check your air pressure, check your sag for the rear shock, and look into fork tokens if those things were already set up properly and you're still having the issue. I'm not using all of my travel. I'm using like half of it on my trails. So the first thing I would ask if someone came in this problem is what were you riding? Because you don't really necessarily want to be using all of your travel all the time. I would say for us typically if we've done a big gnarly descent but didn't have any huge drops or huge hits or sketchy moments where we had a lot of weight on the front end, at least for the example of the fork, we would expect the O-ring even after a fairly gnarly ride to be somewhere like there. If that's what you're seeing, like you're good, you're great, like don't worry about it. If what you're seeing, you're riding trail with quite a bit going on, you're only getting this much travel, like that's obviously a problem. The first thing you wanna check is your air pressure, both front and rear or your spring rate if you have a coil shock. You can try letting a little bit of air out, having a little less air pressure than is recommended, especially if you are a lighter rider or if you're a woman. As women, we carry a little bit less of our weight in our shoulders and upper body generally. This depends on your build, obviously, but we can sometimes lower the air pressure in our front suspension without any major issues and it helps us get all the way through the travel. However, if you are feeling like you're normally not using most of your travel, but then when you do a big hit, you're using all of it, and it's just things feel a little off in that way, you may want to consider removing a fork token. Again, check our video about fork tokens. This decreases how quickly the air pressure ramps up, which allows you to go deeper into your travel without changing the amount of air pressure and therefore without changing the point where you are going to fully bottom out your fork. When I'm riding, my fork feels really harsh all the time. So the thing with my suspension feels harsh is that it's a little vague and it's a little hard to define. So what you wanna do when you're feeling that you, your suspension feels harsh is to kind of observe that a little bit more and see the situations where it's feeling harsh. Do you feel your suspension coming back up at you? Do you feel like you're having trouble holding onto the handlebars because things are bouncing around? That all indicates that your rebound is too fast. If what you're feeling is that your suspension is not feeling as good after a bunch of hits, after a bunch of rocks, like at the end of a rock garden, at the end of a really rough section, that may actually be too slow of rebound. So this is why we encourage with any of these adjustments that you turn it several clicks in one direction so that you get a really definitive comparison and you will know right away if your suspension was feeling harsh because it was too slow because you're stacking up, which we're about to talk about, and you turn it, five clicks slower, you will immediately know that that was the wrong way and you can turn it back around and you can go fast. Too harsh could also be not enough small bump compliance. Assuming you have a fork that has a low speed adjustment on it, that is another option if you've turned your rebound both ways and you're like, this is not changing what I'm feeling, this is not helping, what you'll wanna do is try a low speed adjustment. You will want to decrease the amount of low speed compression that you have. In this case, opening that up a couple clicks. By decreasing the low speed compression, you're essentially making it easier for your fork to respond and compress to those smaller bumps. So if what you're feeling is that you're just really getting beat up on small bumps, that is something to try, assuming you have a low speed compression. If you don't have compression settings, don't worry about that, but do maybe check that your lockout is not on. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. When I'm doing sweet jumps at the top, I always get bucked and I keep landing on my head. This is not what you want, obviously. And this feeling of getting bucked is again, usually a rebound problem. However, it is more of a rebound balance problem. So most likely what is happening is that the rebound in your rear suspension is a lot faster than the rebound in your front suspension. If your rebound in the rear is too fast and your front is too slow, you might experience this getting bucked phenomenon. Basically because as you're going, let's see if we can do a little reenactment. Here we go, this is the bike. As you're going off the lip of the jump, your front suspension is compressed. 
into the lip, and then it's slowly rebounding, but your rear is rebounding really fast. So the rear wheel is going up while the front is staying, is maybe going up slowly, but that can result in the whole bike being kicked forward, getting bucked. So this is a time where you, you might wanna go back to the drawing board with your rebound settings for both front and rear. You wanna make sure that they feel similarly when you are compressing them. The actual number of clicks is kind of arbitrary. So just because you're six clicks from open in the back and six clicks from open in the front does not mean they will feel the same. So you do want to make sure feel the same. We show how to do that in our previous video. It also is a body position thing, but we're assuming that you have good body position here and that it's all your suspension. Skills always come before suspension settings, but this is a suspension setting video, so here we are. <laughs> when I'm pedaling, my rear suspension bobs all the time and I lose all this power. Assuming that you have, again, broken record, checked your air pressure and your sag and all of that looks good, what you're going to want to look at is the low speed compression of your rear shock. If you do not have enough low speed compression, that shock is reacting to the forces that you're putting into the pedals with every pedal stroke, which will create that bobbing. So you will want to try to add some low speed compression. A lot of shocks don't have a low speed compression adjustment, so you probably have a lockout. If you have a bike that doesn't have a great pedaling platform, you're gonna to need to put that lockout to the mid level or all the way firm when you're climbing to not have much pedal bob. As with anything with suspension, if you have massive changes, there may just be something wrong with the shock. Like if all of a sudden you usually have a very stable pedaling platform, suddenly you're going all the way through the travel. Other symptoms are slurping noises, oil spilling out, might be time for a new shock or at the very least a service or warranty on that. I feel like every time I go into a corner, the front end dives and it just pushes me out of the corner and I crash. Ah, the old diving in the corners. That can be a symptom of not having enough air pressure. The next thing to mess with would be your low speed compression. Again, as we talked about in our first video, the two sort of extremes of low speed compression are small bump compliance on one end and platform on the other end. If you are diving, that means you don't have enough platform. So you need to add some low speed compression. To show you on Mackie's fork, we'll add three clicks of low speed compression to add a little bit of platform for those corners and hopefully that will feel better for him. In rock gardens, I feel like my suspension, specifically my fork is stacking up. And by the end of the rock garden, I'm like all the way compressed and I'm at risk of OTBing. Once again, this is probably a rebound problem. If you are feeling like you are stacking up in that you are using your suspension and is not rebounding in time for the next obstacle and you're getting to the end of the rock garden and you're just way over the front end, your suspension is compressed and you feel like you're gonna OTB. Is that what you were feeling? Yep. Yeah. Um, most likely your rebound is too slow. It's also possible that you don't have enough air pressure. So maybe you've noticed a theme in this, which is make sure your air pressure is correct before you start thinking about all these other things. That's definitely like step one. My fork feels really chattery, like bleh, whenever I'm on anything rough. If what you're feeling is just a lot of harshness in rocky sections. The front end of your bike is coming back at you. The back end is bouncing up behind your head. That is probably a rebound issue. And that's what we talked about when Mackie said that his bike felt too harsh. Feeling chattery might just be this kind of overall feeling of sketchiness, especially at high speed on a dirt road where you feel like your bike is reacting to something that isn't there instead of feeling like planted in the suspension. And that is likely again, a low speed compression issue and a just total lack of low speed compression platform. So you will want to, again, turn your low speed compression up, firm up the low speed compression and see if that makes a difference. As you saw from that little section, most of these issues, what you're feeling on the bike can often be explained by a couple of different settings, which is what makes dialing in your suspension so difficult. This probably won't happen overnight. It does take a little bit of time to be able to recognize what you're feeling and understand what that is from a suspension perspective, but it is worth it to keep trying, keep thinking about these things. Don't be afraid to try setting your settings all the way one way or another to see how it feels. Maybe try a mini bracketing test if you have 
a trail where you feel like you can do that. Just feel free to experiment a bit and get more comfortable with what is happening. We hope that these videos have demystified a bit about how suspension works and hopefully you are less scared to turn the knobs and see what happens. If you are feeling something with your suspension that we did not cover in this video or the previous ones, go ahead and leave it in the comments and we will try to get back to you and help you out.